It's 2024, so let's make some predictions about the NASCAR season coming up. In a little over a month, the NASCAR Cup Series cars will be on track at the LA Coliseum for the Clash, meaning that the season is finally here. While we wait for the season to get here, though, let's make some predictions about the 2024 season and some things I think might be happening in the next 12 months. Of course, there's going to be some things where you're like, yeah, this is pretty you know, reasonable. There's going to be some things where you're like, that's a bold take. And that's what we're here to do. Right off the bat, though, I know people are going to ask, who's your champion? I'm picking Kyle Larson in 2024 to, you know, finally pick up his second NASCAR Cup Series championship. I think it's going to be a tough battle, though. I think that Joey Logano is going to be his main contender for that. And if Logano wins the championship, wouldn't be shocked by that either. My championship four are Kyle Larson. I think William Byron gets back, but I don't know if he has that clutch gene to win a one race winner take all type of format. But I know he's going to show up there again eventually. So probably this year, Chris Buescher makes his first appearance in the fan in the final four and Joey Logano comes in and he's going to try to win his third NASCAR Cup Series championship, which would be a big accomplishment for him, especially doing it in the playoff era, something that we haven't seen anybody do yet. So he could kind of set himself uh, ahead of the field in a sense. But let's talk about some things I think will happen throughout the season. And right off the bat, I think Chase Elliott's going to have a return to form. He's going to get back to his winning ways, except he's only going to win one race in 2024, and that's not going to silence all the critics wanting Alan Gustafson fired. And I will say NASCAR fans are a lot like college football fans, where if something doesn't go right one week, they're like, you got to get rid of everybody. Fire the staff. Fire them. Get new players. To calm down, Alan Gustafson's one of the best ever, right? He's one of the few NASCAR Cup Series crew chiefs that has a NASCAR Cup Series championship. But I do think that there is a strong possibility that Alan Gustafson might be doing his last season on top of the box for Chase Elliott. I think there's a strong possibility they could make a change. Don't think it's a smart move. Not sure Hendrick agrees with it, but I do. I could see that happening. But I think Chase Elliott wins one race, doesn't do much in the playoffs. So, Sticking with the Hendrick Motorsports theme real quick, I think Alex Bowman has a massive rebound season. People forget, before he went out with a back injury for a few races last season, he was leading the points and then very high up in the points until that point. I think he wins multiple races in 2024 and he outperforms Chase Elliott. That's not going to stop all of the Alex Bowman haters from getting on social and being like, who's the next driver of the 48 car going to be? I think it's going to be Sam Mayer. Guess what? It's Alex Bowman for as long as Ally wants him to be there and he's not going anywhere. He's a seven-time NASCAR Cup Series winner, and people want to replace him immediately, every single year. It's so baffling to me. Sticking with the Chevy camp, Ross Chastain is going to be the NASCAR Cup Series wins leader in 2024. I think he has five or six wins on the season, and I think Chevy, as a manufacturer, gets off to a hot start next season. Both Ford and Toyota are going to be wandering around trying to figure out their new cars, and I think Chevy's going to capitalize that, on that, at least in the first half of the season. And I think Ross has shown that he has the speed to do it. He's finally using his head. He's putting together complete races. We saw him do it at Nashville. We saw him do it at the season finale in Phoenix. Ross can win races. Ross is now smart enough, and he's not irrational. He's thinking with his head for once, and I think he's going to do it. And I think he's going to go out there and win the most races on the season. He's not going to make the final four, though. And there's not going to be a hail melon because, well, it's illegal. And he's just not going to be in contention for that to even matter. On the Joe Gibbs Racing side of things, they won eight races in 2023. And you're like, that's not that bad of a season. But by JGR standards, that's a pretty mediocre season. I think they have a worse season in 2024. I think that they're going to struggle with the new car at first. But I think that Ty Gibbs picks up his first win. And he gets a stand up on top of the car like he's a little villain from The Incredibles. And he's super happy. I think that Denny Hamlin and Christopher Bell both end up winning two races apiece. And that's it for the company. Five total wins, and Martin Trex Jr. goes winless and decides to just call it a career. He's going to retire and take his fishing boat out and never think about NASCAR again, more than likely. But with him leaving, definitely would, you know, hurt JGR a little bit, because I think that they're going to end up losing their Bass Pro Shop sponsorship out of that as well. But they did get an influx of money from the Harris Sports Entertainment Group, so I think they're going to be okay into the future, but it definitely feels like they're trending downward right now. Sticking in the Toyota camp... A bit of a bold take is the fact that I think Legacy Motor Club visits Victory Lane not once, but twice in 2024, both times with Eric Jones, and I wouldn't be shocked to see Eric Jones pick up his third Southern 500 victory. I think that team finally has all the pieces in place. They got through their growing pains last year. They showed good speed in the second half of the year, and I think that they get it done next season. They picked up a new sponsorship from Advent Health, 
Are they going to struggle with the switch early in the season? Potentially, outside of Daytona and Atlanta. I think they're going to struggle a little bit, but they'll rebound by that summer portion of the season, and they'll be contenders for the rest of the season, both with Eric Jones and John Hunter Nemechek. Moving over to the Ford camp real quick, Brad Keselowski, much like Legacy Motor Club, visits Victory Lane not once, but twice. Brad goes back to Victory Lane two times in 2024, and I think he finally has figured things out. And RFK is going to assert themselves as the number one Ford team to Team Penske. They'll be the 1A to 1B. They clearly set themselves ahead of Stuart Haas Racing and far ahead of Front Row Motorsport, of course, as well. But I think that RFK, between both Chris Buescher and Brad Keselowski, will win multiple races in 2024. And I think that their Stage 60 program with Cam Waters is going to perform very well, um, too. So it'll be interesting to see what they can do next season. Team Penske, of course, is going to be Team Penske. They're going to win a couple races, and they'll probably be around to contend for a championship, even though they haven't looked like championship contenders all year. Stuart Haas Racing, on the other hand, while we stay in the Ford camp, I think that Stuart Haas Racing gets back to victory lane. One time, maybe two times, next season. They went winless last year, which is embarrassing for a company like Stuart Haas Racing. I think Tony Stewart would tell you it's embarrassing as well once he gets done drag racing. But I think the team goes back to victory lane twice next season. I think they went on a short track with either Ryan Priest or Josh Berry, and I think they went on a super speedway with Noah Gragson, maybe. Noah Gragson can lead the charge. He contended last year with Legacy Motor Club at Talladega until he got junked. I think he can do that. Ford has the power to put these cars easily up front. It'll be interesting to see how the new body handles at Talladega and Daytona and Atlanta. But I think Noah Gragson is a guy that has a lot to prove, and I think he can maybe get it done. Just on super speedways, not anywhere else, however. And for all the fans that saying that he's going to have a Kyle Larson-like season, he doesn't have the talent of Kyle Larson. So I don't know where you guys are getting this from. He's not going to have a Kyle Larson-like season. Like I said, he'll be lucky to win on a super speedway. Other than that, I think Stuart Haas Racing still has some growing pains to go through, regardless of what their social admins keep posting about them being real racers and wanting to silence all the doubters and the haters. And it's a very weird campaign they have going on. They need to not do that. Uh, for the time being. All right, let's talk about some schedule predictions for the 2025 season, because of course, you know, we'll start to hear about schedule rumors through the 2024 season. NASCAR finally goes international in 2025. They're headed to Canada. We consider it international. They just say things like, hello there, and A all the time. That's not that big of a difference, but everybody get your Canadian tuxedos ready. They're just not going to Montreal. I think they're going to have their first international race at a different venue. We'll have to figure that one out. Uh, in the time coming ahead. As for the Chicago street race, I think that 2024 is the last season for it, regardless of how successful it is, and NASCAR will have a new street race in 2025, likely in a western city, whether that's Seattle, Salt Lake City, Denver, something along those lines. I think that NASCAR ends up there in 2025, but they remain in Chicago by going back to Chicagoland Speedway in 2025, taking a date from Richmond to make sure that another ISC track in Chicagoland can have a date. They don't want to leave the third biggest media market. They've already left the second biggest media market in Los Angeles while they try to figure out what's going to happen with Fontana. Spoiler alert, nothing's ever going to happen with Fontana. It's never coming back, regardless of what they say. It's it's gone. RIP. Light your prayer candles. I don't have one around. Oh, it's not a prayer candle. Looks like a prayer candle. Oh, cover that logo. So light your candles if you have them. I don't have a place to set this down. Okay, set that over there. But I don't think Fontana's ever coming back. But I do think they go to Chicagoland. The Gen 7 car races really well on an intermediate track. Why not? I also think that Iowa stays on the schedule. And for Iowa to stay on the schedule and Chicagoland to be added back, but another street race to happen means Richmond likely has to lose a date, which I don't know if anybody's ever actually that upset about it. However, it did race pretty well this year for all things considered and it being Richmond with this car. On the other hand, everyone's going to talk about the Nashville Fairgrounds. We'll start there and we'll get to Rockingham in a second. Everybody's going to talk about the Nashville Fairgrounds. It's not happening. Forget about it. It's never coming back. All the Karens down there, the literal advocacy group against racing is named Karen. They're never going to let it happen. City Council's dragging its feet. Nobody takes their job more seriously than a mid-sized city's city council. And they're just continually dragging their feet. So because the Karens won't let it happen, it's not going to happen, at least not 2025, not 2026. We're going to be four presidencies along before this maybe potentially ever happens. And at that point, who knows where NASCAR is going to be at? Cue the person in the comments being like, NASCAR has been dead since 2001. 
we're still here, we're still talking about it, and it's still going to be here by the time that we finally get to race at the fairgrounds, unless they tear it down and put an EV track in there, which was very odd. I've been blocked by that account, so if anybody else has access to it, let me know what they're doing. Uh, but yeah, that was very odd. And then Rockingham. Fans love to talk about Rockingham. They want to see another racetrack get revived after they saw what happened at North Wilkesboro. Rockingham's a great track. I just don't think it ends up on the 2025 schedule in any sort of capacity. It's not owned by SMI. It's not owned by ISC, which means that they're not a place for it on the schedule. Unless, of course, one of those two companies wants to work out a lease agreement, kind of like what SMI does with Coda. Again, though, I just don't see that happening, right? You already have two races at Charlotte. You have another race at... North Wilkesboro, putting a race at Rockingham is then four races in North Carolina right there. I don't know who they think they are. Maybe the Virginia of NASCAR. It just doesn't make much sense to do that, so I don't think it gets done. Other than that, I think the schedule kind of stays where it's at. Some dates might get moved around. I think we do get a new championship race. So I think NASCAR does move the championship race out of Phoenix into another track. Whether that's it's not going to be Homestead. I'm not really sure where they're going to move it to yet, but I'm interested to find out. All right, some driver and team moves, because of course we're going to hear about Silly Season probably starting in early May when we get there in a couple of months. And I have a bold prediction towards the end of this one, but right off the bat, I think that both Austin Cindric and Harrison Burton both get demoted out of their cup rides at the end of the 2024 season. And I know some people are like, there's no way Cindric's getting demoted. His dad's the president of the company. I completely understand that. But the two car at Penske has always been the marquee car. That's the car, and both of his teammates have won championships in back-to-back -back years, and Austin Cindric's just kind of lollygagging around, playing away in his airstream and not producing on track. Granted, he does have a Daytona 500 win in 2022, but since then, he's done absolutely nothing. He's Trevor Bain, if you will, just runs a little bit better on road courses. He needs to have a rebound year in his third full-time NASCAR Cup Series season this year. I just don't think he does it, and I think he goes ahead and gets the boot, and I think Penske goes out and hires somebody to put in that car, a veteran more than likely. And then on the Harrison Burton side, all the Matty D fans are going to say, look, Matt could have done better than what Harrison did. And who knows? He's never driven a Gen 7 car, so we can't judge off of that. But the upside on Harrison was high, and it was worth taking that risk in the moment. And he brought sponsorship along, and Matt Benedetto didn't bring any sponsorship. But I think Harrison Burton gets the boot out, and I think that Cole Custer ends up in that ride for the 2025 season. Who takes a two-car? I don't know yet. Still kind of kicking that around on who I think could possibly be in play for it, but I don't think Austin Cindric returns in 2025. Speaking of Austins, I think that Austin Dillon will also retire at the end of the 2024 season, and he'll step out of the ride and Austin Hill will take his seat for the 2025 season. It allows RCR to start their transition plan. Austin will then move into a managerial role at RCR, and he already signed Kyle Busch. Why not put him in a, in a managerial role and see what he can do on the business side, right? It'll also start the process of RC handing over basically the operations to Mike Dillon and Austin Dillon, whoever wants to lead that, they can figure it out amongst themselves. But I think this will be Austin Dillon's last full-time NASCAR Cup Series season after having an abysmal year in 2023. Daniel Suarez is on the hot seat next season, and I think that he gets the boot as well at the end of the 2024 season and gets replaced by Zane Smith in 2025. Trackhouse currently has four drivers under contract and only two seats in the Cup Series. They, of course, have a partnership with Spire to use their third charter, but I think that for the most part, Zane Smith has a high upside, and we've seen what we can get out of Daniel Suarez, which is one win over the last three seasons, and that's not ideal for, for he or the team, not while Ross is going out there and looking like a world beater more weekends than not at this point. So I think that Zane Smith moves over to that ride, and I think that the ride that Zane is going to be in in 2024, that number 71 car at Spire, well, that'll be Shane Van Gisbergen's seat in 2025 in the Cup Series as they continue their partnership with Trackhouse. Here's where things get a little bit wild. I think that SHR does downsize to three cars in 2025, and they sell off one of their charters. Who buys that charter? Drum roll, please. <laughs> Spire. They once again overpay for a charter, but they now own four NASCAR Cup Series charters. And you're probably thinking, well, who are they putting that car? This is where I think things get a little bit interesting. I think that they enter into a partnership with Junior Motorsport. And Dale Jr. finally gets one of his cars into the NASCAR Cup Series through a partnership with Spire. Spire fields the car, JRM is a partner on the car, and they get to use their partnerships and all of their brand deals 
and they finally get into the Cup Series, Dale Jr. gets to watch a car that he owns, co-owns, race in the Daytona 500, and I think that's their entry in. Could they eventually buy that charter? Who knows? But I think it makes the most sense, and that Spire camp has some deep Chevy ties as well. Plus, Steve Tart's a consultant over there, and he and Dale Jr. are both pretty close. But I think that could be possibly something that happens because Dale Jr. and his company are not buying a charter outright. On the broadcasting side real quick, I know we're going to start hearing about the new broadcasting partners and what their booth and analyst lineup are going to look like for 2025. Here's the unfortunate part. I don't think we're getting very new booths. I think that we'll see analysts and announcers from Fox do either races on Prime or TNT. And same thing for NBC. I think their analysts and announcers will do whatever the ones Fox doesn't do. I think you might see like Jamie McMurray get put into... A, a booth here or there, but I don't think we're going to see these overhauled booths like we expected. I do think that Amazon Prime will have a great at track pre race show and possibly post race show as well. I think they're going to put a decent amount of money into this, which I'm pretty excited about. And before we get out of here, let's make a couple of Xfinity predictions as well. I think Sheldon Creed has a breakout season. I think he racks off four wins. And then I think he claps back at Richard Childress at some point uh, by making fun of the fact that RC called him one of the stupidest drivers in RCR history. I think Chandler Smith struggles, though. I think Sheldon Creed gets the better of him in 2024. I think Shane Van Gisbergen wins two races on road courses for Colleg in the Xfinity Series. I think Josh Williams wins a race as well. Whether that's at a super speedway or an intermediate remains to be seen, but I think that he surprises some people. And I think that Sam Hunt Racing visits Victory Lane for the first time. And I think Parker Kligerman takes that big machine vodka records, Agajanian, Dixie Water, whatever the team name is, number 48 car to Victory Lane next season, picking up his first career win, second win for the team in the Xfinity Series as well. And Haley Deegan, I think she just remains wildly irrelevant and doesn't do much of anything and just continues to fade off into Bolivian. Shout out Mike Tyson. So let me know what all of your predictions are in the comments. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.